guys, welcome back. Sorry if we had some connectivity issues there. Um, we're so glad you stuck around to, to hang out with us. Um, so it's great timing because we actually have um, a little bit of a, a salad here for our friend Sydney. So in case you um, didn't catch us earlier, we do have um, Sydney here. He is a blue tongue skink, um, which is a type of lizard. So he is a reptile, which means that he's covered in scales. And our friend Sydney here, he is a blue tongue skink, which means that he has a very amazing blue tongue. Um, so you might see him sticking out that tongue in just a few moments here. We'll see. We brought him some salad, so hoping, hoping he seemed a little hungry earlier, so we decided to give him some more snacks. So our friend Sydney, he is a blue tongue skink, and he's going to stick that blue tongue out to smell his snacks. Um, so it looks like we have, oh, you don't want that lettuce today, okay? <laughs> he can be a little bit of a picky eater sometimes, which is totally fine. So Sydney here, he's going to be using that blue tongue of his to explore his environment, and he's using it to actually smell. So when he sticks that tongue out, he wiggles it around, he picks up scent particles that are actually floating around in the air. And for Sydney here, that's those, that tongue of his, once it picks up those scent particles, he's gonna pull that tongue back in his mouth and it's actually gonna touch the roof of his mouth where there's a special thing called a vemoronasal organ or Jacobson's organ. And that is gonna help him smell. That sends all the information straight up to his brain and lets him know what he's smelling. Now, Sydney here is a type of lizard that we call a skink. Here in Pennsylvania, where we are in, at Elmwood Park Zoo, we actually have three different native species of skinks that live here in our Pennsylvania forests. We have the northern coal skink, the five-lined skink, and the broadhead skink. So those are all lizards that we actually have right here in Pennsylvania, which is pretty exciting. I encourage you at home to look up some information about some of your other native reptiles that might be living in forests near you. Now, Sydney here, he is from Australia, so we won't find him here in Pennsylvania, but Sydney is native to places like coastal Australia, mostly on the East Coast. He's gonna live in grassland areas, lots of scrubby grassland where he's gonna blend in and camouflage really well. He's also going to live in potentially places like forests and also other kinds of uh, even desert-like habitats. These guys are really great at surviving in a variety of habitats. Um, and for Sydney here, he's, his diet's really gonna help him out too. So for him, he's a generalist eater, which means that he's gonna eat just about anything that he comes across. So he was munching on some leaves earlier, we brought him out some salad, he ate some meatballs a little bit earlier, he might even eat lots of insects, particularly snails. These guys have super powerful jaws that allow them to munch on all kinds of stuff. So Sydney here, he, that being a generalist eater is gonna allow him to eat up all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of food and that's how he's gonna survive in the wild. Now again, that tongue doesn't just help him to smell but it's his number one defense mechanism against all kinds of predators. So in the wild in Australia, there are all kinds of birds of prey, things like hawks or even uh, kookaburras that might try to eat up skinks. Now, now that he's about two feet in length, there probably wouldn't have too many predators, but all kinds of small mammals, um, carnivorous mammals, and also birds, and even other snakes or larger lizards might try to munch on Sydney for lunch. So for Sydney here, that bright blue tongue is gonna allow him to hopefully scare off some predators. So just like you might, um, if you were walking along, if you were going for a hike or a walk and you saw something super brightly colored that was maybe a bright red or a bright yellow, it might be a little startling and you might take a second look at it. And that's what Sydney's hoping that that blue tongue is gonna help him do in the wild. He's hoping that when he sticks that blue tongue out, it's gonna be startling enough that whatever's trying to eat him up is going to turn around or at least take a second look. Enough of a look for him to get away, hopefully quick enough. And you can see that Sydney here, he's kind of using his legs just to help him move along a little bit, but he's really gonna slither around, very similar to a snake. And that's gonna allow him to move around um, and help him not only avoid predators, um, but to help look for some snacks of his own. So it looks like that's what he's doing right now. It looks like he's looking for some, some more of those meatballs. He said, man, I don't really want salad today. I'm way more interested <laughs> in those meatballs you had earlier. So hopefully we'll see. Maybe we can get him a little bit more meatballs. All right, so I'm going to answer some more questions now. I know you guys have quite a lot of amazing questions for us. Again, thanks so much for joining us here at the zoo today. 
All right. And we're just going to make sure that our friend Sydney here, who has no depth perception, does not get too close to the end of our table. All right. So it looks like Caden wants to know if they have good eyesight. Oh, great question, Caden. So Sydney here has pretty great eyesight, right? So he's going to rely on that sense of smell. And he's not going to be like a, per a bird of prey that can see half a mile away. But he's able to see extra colors than we are. And that's going to help him find all kinds of delicious foods. All right, so Paige wants to know if he has ears. Oh, Paige, great question. So if you actually take a peek on the side of his head here, I'll move this leaf for you. If you take a peek on the side of his head, you might see those holes in the side of his head. And those are, in fact, his ears. So he doesn't have the best hearing, but he's still able to hear us pretty clearly right now. So he's tuning in too and listening to all these fun facts about him. All right. Uh, Brisbane wants to know if he eats mosquitoes. Well, you know, I think a mosquito might be a little tricky for him to catch, but if he sees an opportunity to, a opportunity to eat a mosquito, I'm sure he wouldn't say no. All right, and Savannah would like to know how old Sydney is. Oh, great. So Sydney is actually 15 years old. Now, blue tongue skinks can actually live into their 20s, potentially well over 20. So we're hoping that Sydney has a long life ahead of him. All right. Jordan wants to know if Sydney is like him. I don't know, Jordan. Do you like to eat meatballs too? Because if so, you guys are very similar. Harper wants to know what color Sydney can be and if he has any siblings. So there's a potential that Sydney has maybe up to nine siblings, but once they were born, they never really hung out together. They tend to live on their own and live very separate from each other. So they're going to spend a lot of time uh, living on their own and probably doesn't really know where his siblings are right now, but there's a chance that he has up to nine of them. Um, and Sydney is going to be pretty much this color, but blue tongue skinks can vary. They can look a little more tan or a little more brown or, and Sydney here, he's mostly a gray color. Uh, so it kind of depends on the individual, but most of them will look pretty much like this. All right. So Derek wants to know if he has sharp teeth. So his teeth aren't super sharp, but he does have pretty powerful jaws that are going to help him smash down and eat all kinds of delicious snails. Ryan wants to know what kind of habitat they live in. So they do live in grasslands and forests and deserts. So a pretty wide variety of habitats, which is pretty exciting. Shane wants to know if they're active more during the day or at night. So it looks like they're, well, these guys are going to actually be more active during the day, right? So since they're cold-blooded animals, they really like the heat of the sunshine, and that's really important for them to stay healthy. So for them to get good UV, B rays, it's really important for them. And those scales are definitely going to protect against sunburn. So when we might go outside, we might need to put on some sunscreen, but our friend Sydney here is protected with that against with those, those scales that he has on his back. So for him, he is going to prefer to be outside when the sun is out. So that means more so during the day. That's a great question, though. All right. So let's see here. All right. So Grayson wants to know how we can tell if he's a boy or a girl. So it's actually almost impossible. So for our friends, blue tongue skinks, there actually, there's no major difference. There's no way to 100% tell if he's a boy or a girl. Um, we know that Sydney's a boy actually because he had his blood tested when we first got him. Um, so that let us know that he was in fact a male skink or a male lizard. But other than that, there's no way to tell on their color or unlike dude the box turtle where we know that he was a boy because he, of his bright red eyes, we can't really tell with Sydney here. A lot of the girls might have the same colored eyes too. All right, so Avery wants to see a close-up of his claws. How long do those get? Well, that's a great question. So for Sydney here, he has some pretty long claws, um, and, but he has really tiny little feet, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but he's really not going to have terribly long claws because he's not using them for too much climbing or too much digging because he's actually going to take over other burrows that other animals have dug for him. So he's more of a work smarter, not harder kind of lizard. So for him, he's going to take over the burrows of other animals that are going to be 
vacating or leaving their burrows. But his claws, his feet are very small, and his claws, even though they are very sharp, they're pretty small. What is their favorite weather from Juliana? All right, so for our friend Sydney here, his favorite weather is definitely sunshine and probably anything above 75 degrees are definitely gonna be his favorite. And Bradley says, being separated from your siblings must be sad. Is he sad? No, Sydney's not super sad. He actually probably never really knew his siblings, so he is not very sad. Whereas for us as people, right, we like to hang out with people, so we might like to hang out. Um, but for Sydney here, he never really knew them, and he's not really bothered by it. All right, so Gregory wants to know when and if he sheds his skin. That's a great question, Gregory. So for our friend Sydney here, he will shed his scales probably once every few months but he doesn't shed them all at once like a snake. He's going to shed them over a few days and they're just kind of kind of flake off. Um, and that that's happens probably a few times a year. Uh, and that's gonna just help make sure his, his scales are nice and clean since Sydney here doesn't really take any bubble baths. So to stay nice and clean, he's gonna soak in water. Um, and we help him out with that. We help him soak in water. And also he'll shed those scales off, which will keep him nice and healthy. All right, how long do skinks typically live? And that was from Chase. Well, Sydney here is 15 years old, but they can live well into their 20s and even maybe into their 30s. So he has a, a lot of life ahead of him. And yes, they. Jaden wants to know if they use their tongue to smell. They do use their tongue to smell, great question. And he has a bright blue tongue. Hopefully he'll stick his tongue out a little bit for us. So, Natalie wants to know how small is he up close? So Sydney, he's actually about two feet long. So he's pretty big. He's actually a pretty long lizard. Um, so for Sydney here, um, he's, he's, he's pretty long. He's a pretty skinny lizard, right? Because he's gonna try to pretend like he is a snake. But Sydney here, he's not gonna get super long. All right, Emma and Nora want to know if they make good pets. Great question. So Sydney here, they can make pretty great pets, um, but you have to really make sure that you know how to best take care of Sydney, right? Remember, blue tongue skinks are reptiles, so they need really special lighting and heating. They need lots of special dirt and things to move around on. And they have to eat every day, right? They have to eat all kinds of lettuce and salads and also lots of insects. So it's really important that you know exactly what your uh, what your what your pet needs before you decide to keep them as a pet right and remember these guys can live into their 20s that can be a really long time to have a pet so make sure that you're committed to taking care of that animal for their entire life all right so we do actually have some crickets here to feed our friend sydney so let's see if we can uh we can give him some crickets okay you excited you smell it? Alrighty. So remember, he has super powerful jaws, so it's really important that we use tongs to feed him to keep our fingers nice and safe. And you can have the cricket, you can't have the tongs. All right, so Mateo and Christian want to know how heavy he is. He's about a pound. They can be maybe up to a pound and a half. They're not super heavy animals. You don't want this one? He says, no, I don't want this one. Oh, no, maybe. <laughs> we do want that cricket. Hey, can I have that back? Hi, you guys have some really wonderful questions today. Thanks again for joining us at Zoo School Live with Sydney the Blue Tongue Skink. Oh, where do we get our crickets? So we actually, we order our crickets online and have them shipped to the zoo, which is pretty crazy. Um, I don't know if you knew that, but you can actually get crickets delivered to your house. Don't tell your moms. Um, but 
Oh, thanks, Sydney. Um, but if you want to help Sydney out and uh, give him all the crickets his heart desires, you guys are actually totally welcome to donate to our emergency fund, which helps feed our animals here at the zoo during our closure. Um, so if you guys want to help out Elmwood Park Zoo so that we can continue to give Sydney some of his favorite snacks, um, please donate to our emergency fund. Um, and also please check out our website, we're gonna be posting some activities for you guys to do at home and some more information on some of our zoo animals. Um, so if you want to, please check us out on our website at elmwoodparkzoo.org. Well, I don't know, I think Sydney's pretty full. Oh, okay, so last question comes from Sailor. Looks like, do they lose their tail? Well, Sailor, that's a great question. So most skinks, because there are skinks all across the world, remember here in Pennsylvania and in Australia, and they can lose their tail in order to help survive a, a predator attack. And when they drop their tail, uh, most skinks are actually able to regrow their tail. But because it takes a lot of energy, it would take a lot of meatballs for Sydney to eat before he's able to regrow that tail. So it's really important for him to make sure that he hangs on to that tail and he would only drop it in the event of an emergency. Great questions, guys. I'm so glad you guys came out to join us today and listening to our Zoo School Live cast. Um, thanks for hanging out with me and Sydney today. Tune in again tomorrow at 11. We're gonna have a little bit more of a feathery friend tomorrow. So hopefully you guys can join us. Again, please visit our website at elmwoodparkzoo.org. Um, to help check out some of our, our more activity resources. Um, and also, if you're able to, to help donate to our emergency fund to help make sure that Sydney has all the crickets his heart desires. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us, and have a wonderful rest of your day today.